Hi, I'm Stephen Tallamy and in this video I want to explore the Museo platform from Cinesamples and share whether I think it's something you should be investing in. Now this is not a sponsored video and I have no affiliation with Museo or Cinesamples. I just wanted to give my impressions of the platform to see if it would be useful for you. Now if you don't already know about Museo, it's a relatively new offering from Cinesamples that repackages their existing sample libraries into a dedicated plugin. You can pay for access to the plugin either monthly, yearly, or even get a lifetime access pass. So I've loaded up the Museo plugin here in Logic. It runs in most DAWs um, and also it can run standalone if you want to run it that way. And when you open it up, you're basically presented with the catalog here. It's got this nice explore page so you can look at some of the new things that have been added or browse by different types of categories. Something that you could maybe have here would be a recents tab. So the things that you've recently used and maybe even a favorite system so that you could star your favorite patches. So most of what you're going to be doing is looking at the catalogue here. So you can see all of the cine range here, so basically the orchestral range. Most of this is here, there's a few to come. Uh, there's a set of synths, these drum patches, really big uh, sounding drums. There's this uh, fiddle sound, a pipe organ, uh, guitars, vocals. One of the first ones that I really wanted to have a play with was the Tina Guo library. So we've got the legato here. But also there's the rest of the solo cello here, so lots of different articulations. This sol pont patch is very nice, especially down in the low range. Some shorter patches. and a range of different improvisations as well. So one of the great features about Museo is that you don't have to download all of any of the libraries all at once. You can pick and choose the different articulations you actually find useful. So if we go into the Gina Luciani here, you'll see each of the different patches are here. And because I haven't previously downloaded them, you'll see that they have this little download icon next to them. So I can either click that to download it, or if I click load, it will actually download it in the background. Now I deliberately picked a fairly small patch here. So this is 58 megabytes, so it's going to come down pretty quickly. And now I have a concert flute staccatissimo. And what you can do here is you can preview each of the patches, which is really nice. And if you find a few that you really like, you can just download those in the background and they're downloaded simultaneously. So that means you don't have to use all of your bandwidth downloading the whole library all at once. You can pick and choose what you actually want to download in the future. And whilst they've done this at the moment with the articulations, they're also going to do it with the mic positions, I think. So it means that if you want to load up a patch and just have a standard mix, which is what you get at the moment, then you can just download that. But then if you need to add the other mics, you'll be able to download those separately. So again, no big downloads if you don't need everything that's in that library, which I think is really, really powerful. So in the settings here, you can choose where you want to download it. So here in tools and instruments, you can move the samples and have them in an external SSD or wherever you'd like it to be hosted. So that's really useful. Let's have an explore of some of the other sounds. So let's look at the drums of war. I've got these downloaded already. So here's the war ensemble. And I can keep layering that up to as big as I would like. There is a nice piano here, piano in blue. So let's load that one up. And this is a slightly more muted sounded piano.
So if you want to go and find more pianos, you can go up here and search. And you'll see some of the other options here. So there's the Sydney piano here, and that has a studio one, cinematic, classic, and rock. So a good few options here. I think for this to be a fully rounded out piano selection, I'd like to see a few more, maybe some felt options and various other different tonal types of pianos, maybe some uprights as well as grands. But it's a good start. So where this library comes into its own is, again, you don't need to have downloaded anything. So if you need some handbells, you can quickly look at them, say, yep, I need some sleigh bells, hit load, and it downloads them ready for you to go. So a lot of people are going to be very interested in the orchestral range, the cine brass and uh, percussion, woods, worlds. So there's a really good range of different instruments here. What I really like is not only are there things like the regular things you'd expect out of a drum patch like timpanis and um, snare drums, you've also got some really nice extras in this cine perk orcs. So again, if you need one of these uh, waterphone sounds or even a typewriter, so I really like the fact that there's a whole range of extended techniques and extended sounds. So one of the things they haven't implemented yet is key switching on articulation. So let's load up a few different articulations here of the Descant horn. And by the way, you can move this out of the way. If you click hide catalog, you can have this full screen. So I've actually loaded up a range of different articulations. And normally you would have some key switches down here to allow you to switch between those. That is coming, but that doesn't mean you can't do different articulations already using an articulation map. So you'll notice here I've got each of the sounds on a different MIDI uh, input. So one, two, three, and four. So what I've done here in Logic is I've set up an articulation set. And so what you'll see here is I've created different articulations, legato, sustain, staccato, staccatissimo, and then I've given them a different output channel. So one, two, three, four, just matching the ones that I set this up. And so what that means is I've now got the ability to switch articulations here up in the player. But it also means I can use it inside of the piano roll. So if we do a quick recording here. So if we want these notes to be staccato, let's select them and change their articulation to staccato. And maybe pull them up the velocity just a little bit. And let's listen now. So without even waiting for the update, we do actually have articulation switching. It's just not using the common key switching method that many people are used to using. So what's interesting is they're publishing their roadmap as well for new sounds and new features. So you can see here they have uh, live all of these ones that came out in May and there's a couple more to come, Cine Winds and Cine Brass. You can see Cine Strings Pro and Cine Harpsichord, but there's some really interesting stuff from Africa, from Iceland, uh, Ireland, Scotland. There's the great Voices of War, which I'm very much looking forward to coming out, some more synthesizers. Uh, there's the other Tina Guo library as well. And so actually by the end of August, they should have everything from the traditional Cine Samples uh, packages. They are also adding some effects into the plugin. They've got the ability to have the microphones. This is the download thing that I mentioned. So you should be able to download the microphones you want to add to the mix. Um, whole bunch of additional parameter controls and also articulation switching which I mentioned earlier there is a way around that but this will be a way of setting that up so at the moment the controls that you actually have on any instrument is very basic it's just expression dynamics and reverb which are kind of the main things that you're going to use most of the time and these can be mapped via MIDI CC to a controller so you can see here expression and dynamics are controlled And you can remove some of the reverb if you want.
what I like here is they've started with the basics and got them working really, really well and then added the sounds and then adding features over time. Something that I'm often wary about with a third party sampler is will it load quickly? Will it work on the different platforms? If I upgrade my Mac, is it going to keep working? What's great here is that Musio has got one application, which means that they can update that one and tune that one without having to keep going around it. So as opposed to having lots of different plugins that are all slightly different versions, you're going to get one version. So I think they'll be able to keep this up to date a little bit like how Contact can do that and keep things working across the platform. So I'm pretty confident that they can do this, but there is always that risk that they do hit a problem and you're going to be stuck. So so far, I think they are doing a really good job. And one of the nice things here is they've got this submit feedback. I've already submitted some feedback on some ideas that I've had for it. And they've gotten back to me within a day. So really great uh, effort from the support team there. So uh, kudos on that. And I really do think they've done a great job of loading the samples. The whole interface is very, very easy to use. So kudos on that as well. Let's explore a little bit more of the library here. So down here, we've got the Voxos. So these are some vocals. Let's give these a try. Let's layer that with some men. So they've made it very easy to stack up lots of different sounds into the one patch or put them onto different MIDI channels, have them to different outputs. So that's really great. Of course, you can just use them one per track. So I've loaded up multiple instances of Musio, one on each track, and that works perfectly well as well. So here is the Forbes pipe organ. Let's load that one up. And from that, maybe to some nice harp. And just one more, let's try out the fiddle. So far, I've been really impressed by Musio, and they seem to be living up to their promises to deliver all of the Sydney Samples content into the Musio platform by August. The quality and selection of sounds is really impressive, which I guess doesn't come as any surprise given the source material they're working with. But you don't have to rely on just my review of Musio because one of the great things about the Musio platform is that you can try it for 14 days and just download the sounds you want to try out. What are your thoughts on Museo? Have you given it a try? And what sort of things would you like to see them add to it? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.